Yeah, we have six out of seven members. It's seven oh three. So, with res in respect for everyone's time, uh, why don't we get started? <clears throat> so, th this is the the Report Historical Commission virtual meeting uh, for Thursday, the 22nd of July, 2021. So I'll do a quick roll call of the members who are present, uh, starting with, um, I just do it in alphabetical order. So uh, Malcolm Carnwath, I saw you in there. You might have to unmute yourself. Can you? Uh, I'm here. There you go. Great, Malcolm. Thank you. Um, Mark Sandrone appears to be absent. Not seeing him in the attendees list, so I'm going to, for now, mark him absent. Just give me a second here. Okay, uh, Christopher Fay. Here. Okay, Joe Morgan. Here. Okay, Peter McNamee. Here. Patricia Pecknick. Here. And the chair, Glenn Richards, is also here. Okay, very good. Also present are Andrew Port, our planning director, Caitlin Sullivan, and the note taker, Gretchen Joy. Uh, I see there are many uh, attendees in public. So um, only the commissioners will have the audio enabled. The participants who are give, making presentations will have their audio enabled as well during that time. Uh, if there is a public comment period and you wish to speak, please use the Zoom function to raise your hand. Uh, if you're on a computer, it's usually a an icon in the bottom panel there somewhere. If you're on the phone, it would be star nine to raise your hand, star six to unmute yourself. You will need to, when you're when we recognize you, you will need to, we, well, we will unmute you on our end. You will need to unmute yourself on your end. And as with any public meeting, identify yourself with the name and address and ask you to please keep your comments to uh, approximately two minutes or so. And we'll probably uh, nominate one of us to keep track of the time at that time. Okay, uh, also just to remind the commissioners, uh, just uh, if you're making a motion or a second, just mention your name so we can get that clear in the record. Okay, without further ado, the first item on the agenda is a demolition delay application uh, for 22-24 Olive Street. I believe the uh, applicant is represented by attorney uh, Lisa Mead. So uh, let's see, our, uh, it looks like uh, audio has been enabled for you, Ms. Mead, and the architect, whose name uh, I don't have at the moment. Actually, it's Mr. Ernest DeMaio. Okay, so uh, the um, Ms. Mead, if you the first part of this, as I'm sure I know you're familiar with, is to a determination about historical significance and whether it's preferably preserved or not. From my re quick review of what you've submitted, it looks like. Um, you're not really contesting it, but when I let you make any your, any comments you might have about um, historical significance and preferable preservation treatment before we um, move on. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the commission. Uh, for the record, Lisa Mead, Mead, Tellum and Costa, 30 Green Street in the report. And with me this evening is the applicant, uh, 2224 Olive Street LLC, represented by John Sarkis also a new report resident and the um, architect on the project, as you noted, uh, Mr. Chair, is Ernie DeMeo of Tectonics Architects. Um, if you can go to the first slide, please, Andy. So the property is at 22 to 24 Olive Street. It's that highlighted yellow um, property. It's on the corner of Russia and Olive Street. It's presently a two-family home and we're proposing to continue it to be a two-family home, although of course that's not the jurisdiction of the board. Um, it is in the R2 in the DCOD district. Uh, the DCOD is not triggered by this application. Uh, we are here as the chair indicated for demolition delay related to the change of the roof line of the earlier added addition, um, which is most adjacent to Russia Street. So go to the next slide, please. So the structure was built in around 1830, according to the form B, uh, it is um, described as federal. Uh, it's unclear exactly who originally built this house, but prior to 1851, it was acquired by Moody Pearson, of, um, uh, who was a lumber merchant on Brown's Wharf. Uh, interestingly, also according to the Form B, the property was purchased by the Society for the Relief of Aged Females in 1866, which refurbished the structure and then operated it as a home for aged women until 1892, at which time that home was moved to High Street. Next slide, please. 
Uh, the original structure is in good condition. Uh, the two additions on the rear are not in such great condition, uh, but are also not um, appropriate for the, um, the architecture of the building. The addition uh, on the rear near Russia Street as well, was built sometime before or during 1888, at least parts of it. Uh, looks like it was rebuilt around the 1900s. The second or northerly addition was clearly constructed more recently. If you go to the next slide, please. So these are the early Sanborn maps. At the top is the 1888 Sanborn map. And you'll see uh, right in the middle of that map, uh, you'll see the structure with that, with an addition on uh, the Russia Street side. And if you go to the 1894 map below, um, it still has that um, addition on, uh, kind of looks like an appendage in this instance uh, on the Russia Street side. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, and then you see in uh, this, this uh, 1900s, uh, the appendage is gone, but there is an addition still on the rear um, on the Russia Street side. That addition remains in 1906. Uh, we suspect, is given the research that we've done uh, on the structure, that that um, is the addition that uh, one of the additions we're proposing to take off. The other one is on the northerly side, as I suggested, um, and it is more recent. So here are the photographs um, we want to go through of the structure. Uh, I'm sure many of you recognize the structure. It's quite prominent on the corner of Russia and Olive Street, which is this view right here. Next slide, please. Uh, again, this is going up Olive Street toward High Street. Um, <clears throat> the house on the right, the brick house on the right, is actually uh, one of uh, New Report's famous deeded half houses. Um, but you can see the structure, um, the gray structure on the second, uh, on the right-hand side there. Next slide, please. And here's another view of the structure from Olive Street. Next slide. Uh, and this is a, a view coming down Russia Street towards Olive Street. You see the set of row houses that on the opposite side of um, our proposed um, project. Um, at the end of uh, Russia Street here. But on this property right now, as you can see, there's a, a large uh, uh, barn slash workshop in the back, which is up against the back corner on the property line, um, which basically blocks the view of the, um, of the house from this direction. Next slide, please. Um, this is a view, uh, again, um, going down uh, the street a little bit so you can see um, the back of the structure. You can see the two additions on the rear. Next slide, please. Uh, and here's a little bit more up close of that same view. Um, I'll note when we get later in the um, presentation, um, we're going to be um, re-exposing some of that rear wall as part of our proposal. Next slide, please. And here's a more up close view of the Russia Street side. You can see that um, addition sits right on uh, Russia Street um, off the back of the house. Um, doesn't quite look like it belongs. Next slide, please. And here's the addition from the rear. You can see there are two different additions that were attached to the house. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, northerly side of the house. Um, the newer addition is on uh, this slide as well on the right. Next slide, please. And this is a view on that northerly side toward Olive Street. And next slide, please. And again, here is the view from the backyard. The backyard is very busy, as people in the neighborhood know. Next slide, please. And then here's another view of the existing backyard. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, um, we uh, would like the um, board to make a determination. Um, I don't think that there's really any question that the house is um, historically significant. Um, and I suspect then that the board would determine, maybe not, uh, that the, um, uh, the house itself, um, maybe not the additions, would be preferably preserved. So um, with that, we turn it over to the board for that determination. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mead. Um, so let me just do uh, I'm trying to, um, well, per discussions among the board, uh, include be more inclusive on this. And uh, so the first determination is, as uh, Ms. Mead said, 
the decision as to historical significance and consider it for preservation. That is the uh, only determination which would then lead to a demolition plan review, et cetera. So let me just check in with you all. Um, does anyone, and I see um, um, Mr. Mark Sandrone has also joined us. Um, Mark, I didn't happen to notice when you joined. Can you unmute yourself and just, uh, did you hear the entire um, uh, Attorney Mead's whole presentation? Uh, just, it's significant as to whether or not you can vote on this. You there, Mark? Oh, you got to unmute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I do apologize for being slightly late. I was having trouble connecting, so I'm using my cell phone. Uh, um, so I did um, <laughs> hear most of the presentation, and I did review the application carefully. Okay. All right. So uh, as long as you're you're on, Mark, uh, any any comments as to the no comments but... significance and pref and preferential or uh, considered for preservation status. No comments right now. Okay. Um, Christopher, any thoughts on that? Um, I'm going to have to, I heard like every other word that she was saying. So it just kept cutting out. So I'm going to have to, uh, uh, technical. I'll pass for now. Okay. Technical issues. issues. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. All day. All day. Hmm. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Patricia Picnic. Patricia, um, I would like to, make, in fact, make a motion that it is historically significant and should be considered for preservation. The form B says it's an 1830 federal. Our district data sheets say 1800 to 1825. So I would like to make that motion. Okay. Um, I'm not opposed to that motion being made now. Does Is there a second on the board? I will yeah, I'll second it. it. Joe Morgan. Okay, thank you, Joe. Okay, so there's a motion that it is historically significant and considered for preservation. I'll go through the roll here. Um, uh, Malcolm, your vote yes, on that? Yes, I agree. Okay. Um, Mark Syndrome? Yes, agree also. Chris Faye? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Okay, Peter McNamee? Yes. Thank you. Patricia Pecknick? Yes. Okay, and the chair is also a yes on that. So the way the ordinance uh, reads, and I'm sure uh, oh, just for everyone's, so we're all on the same page, uh, this um, technically it says we send a report to the building commissioner and, and then when that happens, there's a 12 month demo delay and so on. Uh, as you, all, as I know, Attorney Mead is familiar with, we've been kind of shrinking or condensing that time frame somewhat, but, um, the uh, we have a we do move on to the demolition plan review. You, historically, that's been a subsequent meeting, but it's that the public notice has been given, and I see there are a lot of attendees. So we will have a, a demo plan review, which will start with your comments. Uh, uh, either that's you, Ms. Mead, and per, and the architect, if you like, and followed by a public comment period and uh, deliberation of the board. So, did you want us? Um, launch into that attorney me yes thank you um andy you can go to slide 21 please um so yes i'm going to make a presentation and ernie will also be making a uh, part of this presentation thank you mr chair um so the applicant um proposes uh to put to remove all of the current existing outbuildings um from the property uh and then to construct an addition on the rear of the property meeting all of the zoning requirements um, you will see in the site plan how that addition fits on the property. Um, there's a connector and um, the, the addition um, more towards the rear of the property and almost smack dab in the middle of it. So the next slide, please. So the um, proposal um, for the original structure is to clean and repair and repoint the bricks to replace the plastic shutters to not with plastic shutters, but with wooden shutters, to repair and refurbish the chimney, um, to accept in the rear, uh, none of the um, openings will change. The windows and door openings will be the same. Uh, it's likely to be painted a lighter color, to restore the wooden doors, side lights, and transoms, and to remove, as I said earlier, the buildings and greenhouse and other structures from the rear of the lot. Um, next slide, please. 
Overall, the new addition uh, will uh, not interfere with any of the views of the existing structure. Importantly, the streetscape of the existing structure from Olive Street will remain unchanged and be improved from the Russia Street view. As more of the original wall, as Ernie will review in a moment, and window openings will be exposed. The new addition will be shorter in height and smaller in footprint than the existing structure. For the addition is attached in a manner which clearly sets it apart from the historic structure. And the materials of the new addition will be complementary to the existing structure, but will not copy it. They're meant to set it apart, the new from the old. Uh, importantly, the roof design will be similar, however, so as not to be so different from the existing structure as to be a distraction. A chimney is added to the new addition to complement the chimneys of the existing structure. Importantly, the applicant is not proposing to modify, as I said earlier, any of the existing window or door openings on the original structure, except as we note on the back shortly. Also, the removal of the other detached miscellaneous structures on the lot um, the addition will have ample room in the side yard along Russia Street, so as not to impose either on the street or the neighbor to the north. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Ernie to uh, review the architectural drawings. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, my name is Ernest Deneo. I'm the owner of Tectonics Architects in Salem, Mass. Uh, we're the architects for the project. Here you see uh, drawing EX 2.0 represents the existing facades. Um, they're labeled accordingly. You can see the Russia Street elevation is the top left elevation. And the uh, addition that we're proposing to remove is on the left side of that. Uh, uh, similarly, we have the elevation below that, which shows the addition from the opposite side, the north elevation. And then the west elevation on the bottom right shows uh, how those two additions, um, but up against the existing uh, west wall of the original building. Um, as a point of fact, um, the uh, existing facade, the original facade is more than 50% covered with the present additions. And I do not suspect that either addition were designed in a way that was attempting to replicate or honor the original building stylistically, which is something that we're very much trying to do with our project. Uh, next slide, please. In this particular drawing, we're showing the extent of the demolition uh, shown as shaded. So as you can see, uh, starting in the top right, Olive Street, we're proposing no changes to the facade. Uh, the top left, the south elevation, you can see the one story uh, prior addition that we'll be removing in its entirety. Immediately below that is the north elevation, which shows the one story addition being removed without any other change to the existing north elevation. And then you have the uh, west elevation, uh, which shows the existing one story elements being removed and also a portion of the existing facade that is currently exposed, which will be uh, covered by the new connector that we're proposing. Of note are the uh, windows, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next drawing. Next slide, please. So uh, these particular drawings show, again, the west elevation existing conditions. And below that is a sketch that we prepared showing um, existing windows and existing masonry openings that are currently concealed and interior space. The shaded area represents the um, image of the connector building that we're proposing to uh, add to the facade to make our connection. We're setting back the uh, addition from Russia Street approximately six feet, which is uh, twice as far as it's set back now. And the existing area that we're proposing to attach actually creates about 257 square feet of original facade that will now be exposed to the exterior, which has been previously concealed by earlier additions. There are three windows on the second floor that are existing, one of which will be covered up by the new connection. The other two windows will be retained as we position the addition to fit uh, between those two windows. 
On the first floor, there are two windows to the left of our connector building. Those are interior openings in the space now. We're proposing to uh, restore them to window openings, the correct size and the correct windows to match the rest of the windows on the facade. There are two masonry openings interior that will be um, covered up by our connector building, but we're going to maintain the masonry openings as they exist. So they'll be remain as interior masonry openings unchanged dimensionally. And then to the right of the connector building is a window that we suspected and later proved was concealed by the addition within uh, an enclosed wall. We've since done some exploratory demolition and determined that the original masonry opening is still there. It's been bricked in. Our intention is to remove the infill brick and restore the window opening. So in essence, we have uh, three windows on the west facade presently, and once the addition is constructed, we'll have five windows. So we've restored a net of two windows to the west elevation. And, um, and as I mentioned, 257 square feet of presently covered original facade will be exposed to view. Next slide, please. This uh, drawing represents the south elevation, which is the Russia Street elevation, and also the east elevation, which is Olive Street. The Olive Street elevation will remain physically unchanged uh, from its current configuration. The uh, south elevation shows the connector piece, which will be attaching to the original building. And then uh, the, the body of our addition is to the left of that. Uh, both the connector piece and the body of the main addition will be set back in plane from the existing building, the connector six feet back, as I mentioned, and the body of the addition will actually be canted to parallel the geometry of Russia Street. When viewed from uh, the corner of Olive and Russia, the uh, connector and the body of the building will appear to um, step back and recede towards uh, the center portion of the lot as Attorney Meade mentioned previously. Uh, we are, um, our roof line for uh, the addition is actually several feet below the ridge line of the existing building. So we're slightly shorter than the existing building. We felt that the original eave lines were important to uh, bring a, a more unified uh, look to the project. So we've continued the eave line of the existing roof around both portions of the addition. And, um, and uh, next slide, please. This view here on the top is the north elevation, which is essentially the, the uh, side yard or rear yard of our addition. Shows the connector piece um, uh, attaching to the existing building. And then we have the, the main body of our addition to the right. There is an egress point from the addition to a, uh, a platform, uh, which leads to grade to a uh, parking area that we're creating on the right side and the space in between the main body of the addition and the original building uh, comprises mudroom entries that allow either occupant to enter at the center and move either to the left or, or right respectively. The west elevation at the bottom of the page shows the facade as it faces uh, uh, when viewed from Russia Street, you would see a portion of this elevation. This is facing the, um, what would be the rear lot line from Olive Street. Um, as Attorney Mead mentioned, we're planning to build a uh, chimney that matches the chimneys elsewhere on the project to visually tie together all of those elements. And our low slope tip roof also gestures towards the original building. Um, we are trying to create a um, classically simple and elegant addition that does not upstage the original building, but is harmonious and compatible with it without actually replicating it. Next slide, please. These views um, show uh, three-dimensional views from various uh, angles. Starting at the top left, you're seeing a 
semi-aerial view from uh, Russia Street showing how the addition defers to the existing primary facade along Russia Street of the original building with our uh, setback to allow the two existing windows on the original building to be exposed, one window which is already there and one window which we hope to expose and restore. Um, the slide to the top right shows a, a different view from the corner of Olive and Russia Street showing how our addition uh, steps back slightly from the facade along Russia of the existing building. Elevation two on the um, middle left shows our addition as viewed from further down Russia Street looking towards Olive Street. And you can see the two windows in the uh, original building that are within the notched setback of the connector building. On the mid right, we see the um, existing building to the left with our notched connector and then the body of our addition to the right side. Um, we have, uh, as Attorney Mead mentioned, uh, we have significant setbacks to all uh, surfaces of our addition. We're in fact in conformance with the current zoning ordinance that the approach was taking both in terms of setback and height and lot coverage. So we're essentially dimensionally speaking as of right with the project. The lower left-hand uh, view is a close-up view of the mudroom addition as viewed from uh, the first floor of Russia Street and the two windows, as I mentioned, that we are restoring. One, one we're restoring, one that is uh, being retained. And then the lower right-hand corner is a view from essentially the side or backyard of the addition. Next slide, please. As, as Attorney Mead mentioned, we are um, uh, trying to create an addition that is complementary, but not a cartoon or a replication of the original building. We want our building to be harmonious and complementary, but be subtle and sort of a, a background structure when compared to the original building, we really want to celebrate this building, this original building, and restore it properly. Um, the roof design, as Attorney Mead mentioned, is meant to uh, complement the original design. The chimney uh, that we're adding to our building will complement the existing chimneys, which are a very important part of the organization of the original building. And uh, the last point there, uh, re-exposing uh, brick and some original window openings covered by the additions, we feel is a, a huge plus for the project, especially those who um, uh, respect and admire the original structure. We're doing our best to try and uh, not only retain, but um, reintroduce elements that have been hidden in the past. Uh, I think one thing that I wanted to mention about the project overall and a strategy for um, uh, our, our design strategy relative to the original elements is that we're, we've done um, extensive work in the interior to keep as many elements as they currently exist. So we're keeping the wood floors in place. There are beautiful timber ceilings that are exposed. In fact, in one area where a drywall ceiling was later added, we're planning to remove that drywall ceiling to re-expose original ceiling in the building. We're retaining as many partitions on the interior as we possibly can. We are keeping the original uh, grand stair that's in the center hallway. We're keeping it. We're not changing the physical configuration of it. Any changes that we make in the interior are made from the point of view of let's keep this beautiful building as intact as we can and in places where we can actually bring it back to what it was. That's, that's our goal. Um, next slide, please. Um, I, I think we covered uh, many of these points in uh, previous slides. I think the points, uh, the last point there, if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. So we've created enough distinction between the addition and the original building that it's clear which is which. And uh, if for whatever reason the addition were removed in the future, the integrity of the original structure would remain. Next slide, please. 
This next slide talks a little bit more about some of the materials that we're proposing uh, to use, as mentioned previously by Attorney Mead. Uh, existing door and window openings from the original structure will remain uh, unaffected. We are not planning to change any of the original uh, window openings or door openings, except in the places where we're planning to restore them. The um, plastic shutters that exist around the building will be removed and replaced with wood shutters that are compatible with the, with the project. We're going to, um, as part of the roof work that we're doing, we're going to replace the uh, shingle roof with architectural shingles that uh, will be used throughout both the original building and the addition. Uh, two of the chimneys are in structural need of uh, refurbishment. Uh, those will be restored uh, to exactly their current configuration. The remaining chimneys will be uh, repointed where necessary and made whole again. Uh, we're planning to put um, a gutter and leader system on the building, which is consistent with historic structures, either uh, of a, a, a copper color or actual copper gutters and leaders, something that is consistent with that era. We are um, planning to paint the brickwork, which has been previously painted maybe more than one time. We did an evaluation of the brickwork and found that um, we would not be able to restore the brickwork um, properly by removing the paint. And so we're planning to um, repaint the buildings in a slightly lighter uh, color than what is presently there. I think the existing color is uh, sort of a grayish blue color and we would like to lighten the building slightly and give it a new uh, freshness, a new life. Um, we have a, a slightly contrasting color with the addition. We're planning to be primarily uh, an off-white color, more of a uh, sort of a colonial white color in the addition. Um, we're uh, planning to use um, uh, cementitious uh, horizontal clapboard siding for the addition, um, which is compatible with uh, similar projects of this uh, scale and intervention in the Newbury Port area. And uh, the shape and proportion of the windows picks up on the shape and proportion of the windows of the original building. From our experience um, measuring the original building, which I personally did from the basement to the roof, I can tell you that I have a, a, a strong respect for the original builders of this building. The masonry openings are remarkably consistent and uh, reliable around the entire facade. We learned a lot about the organization of the buildings and the pattern and rhythm of the windows. And we tried to employ those lessons learned in the addition while not actually literally replicating what's there. We tried to employ those lessons in the overall organization of the addition. Next slide, please. Um, Ernie, if I could, Ernie, could I just interrupt one minute? I want to add one other thing that um, is not on the materials slide, but the applicant would welcome the condition. Uh, we have heard from uh, a neighbor relative to the exposed foundation. You'll see that um, we have uh, uh, plants around the foundation of the new structure. Um, the request was to put a brick veneer um, or some material on that foundation um, so as not to have the concrete. And so the applicant will be putting a, a brick veneer um, that will be painted, which will pick up from the um, original structure um, around the new foundation. So I'll turn it back over to you, Ernie. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Um, the next several slides are um, somewhat realistic um, renderings of what we're proposing to do. Uh, this first view is a view from the uh, Russia and Olive Corner showing our addition relative to the existing building, how we'd like to lighten up the facade, um, bring some of the texture from the original facade to the addition at our, at our mudroom areas. Um, we're really uh, seeing the addition as being uh, a classically simple addition. That is our goal. We want the original building to really shine. And I think that uh, we put our best foot forward by uh, keeping the addition step back and the scale of which 
uh, smaller than the original building. Next slide, please. This next slide is taken from Olive Street showing our addition uh, sort of peeking out back uh, towards the right side of the slide. Uh, there will be a brief window of space where our addition can be seen from Olive Street, but uh, for the most part, uh, the addition will be viewed primarily from uh, Russia Street, but we did want to show how our addition uh, might be seen when viewed from Olive Street. Next slide, please. We have two views uh, taken from this vantage point. This first one is taken uh, showing a tree that we're planning to keep uh, removed for the purposes of seeing the facades. If we go to the next slide, please, you can see uh, when the existing tree that is there will be retained. So we're not removing the existing tree, uh, but we wanted to show you the facades with the tree removed so that you could understand visually what the facade is doing. So if we could go back to slide 35, please. Um, slide 35 shows the configuration of the addition relative to the existing building. It shows the parking areas that we're proposing, one in front of the mudroom areas, and the second one to the left of the addition. Um, really what's uh, driving the green space is a, an attempt on our part to give a nice green forecourt to each of the facades, both the original facade and um, uh, facade, the main body of the addition. So we uh, kept some green space and um, there will likely be further uh, study of the landscaping, but uh, I think the important notion here is that we'd like uh, each of these facades to have a foreground that is um, green and pleasing to those uh, both inside and outside. Um, and uh, next slide, please. So here's, here's an aerial view with the tree inserted. You could see the fence along the left side of the property, which uh, exist today would be cut back slightly to allow our new parking area to be built to the left of our addition. There's a walkway that goes from that parking area towards the, the uh, rear, if you will, doors um, uh, of the addition. And then we have the central mudroom, which accesses either the unit to the left or to the right and the parking area directly in front of it. Um, next slide, please. I think, I think that's it. Okay. So um, with that, Mr. Chair, um, we'll turn it back over to the board and we would certainly welcome any questions. Okay, thank you. I just have two before I open the public comment, two questions I need to answer. Um, I understand, are you, do you need to appear before the ZBA for any uh, relief of anything particular? Because I heard the uh, architect say that, uh, you know, you're dimensionally, you're okay and so on. We do need to get a special permit for non-conformities. Um, I think what Ernie was saying was that the addition is built in conformance with all of the setbacks. So the existing structure, um, it has a um, front yard setback that is non-conforming. And so because the addition is more than 500 square feet, we need a special permit for non-conformities from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, and the other one real quick was, um, and you can see it on this slide, where that uh, parking patch is, it appears that there was a garage there, and there may have also been a shed there as well that I thought I saw in the pictures, um, and I thought in one of the, in the demolition, uh, one of the uh, shots that show the demolition, it looked like there was a demolition of a garage, but I didn't hear that mentioned at all. Could you comment on that? Yeah, we actually we did. We said that we would be removing. It's that's a newer added garage, so it's not covered under. Nor is it contributory to the district. Um, but in any event, uh, we will be removing. There are several um, outbuildings on the property. We'll be removing. Andy, if you could go up to the site plan, which is like the second or third slide, maybe uh, back down after the photos. Sorry. There we go. So um, you can see in the kind of grayish hash area, um, Mr. Chair, um, in the back, you can see um, on Russia Street in the back corner, you can see the um, garage slash workshop that's being removed. There's mm -hmm. also a building in the middle 
of the lot that's being removed. That's like a greenhouse area. And there's a couple of little like shed kind of things over along the um, uh, northerly lot line that will be removed as well. Okay. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so what we've been doing is uh, the board has decided to follow a procedure that's similar to the ZBA. So um, uh, um, the, uh, so after your presentation, <clears throat> we'll have a public comment period. We have members of the public can comment, and then the board will uh, have any questions and proceed uh, to liberation. So uh, the, we will formally open the public comment period. So if you are in attendance and wish to make a public comment, uh, as you can see on the screen there, please use the Zoom function to raise your hand. If uh, you are on a telephone, you can use star nine to raise a hand and star six to unmute. So once uh, you are recognized, uh, unmute yourself and give your name and address and your comment. Uh, is there someone on the board who would be willing to try to keep tabs of the two minute uh, timing? Um, Glenn, no, yeah. no time limit was announced or enforced for the applicant. So I, I, I would like to everyone to be treated fairly. I'm not mm -hmm. sure it's fair to limit people to two minutes. I, I think that we can say two minutes is great. I <laughs> wouldn't have to, there was no time limit. That right. Was the present All right. Well, yeah, I, I hear you. And typically what we do is we, we encourage people to keep their comments to approximately two minutes or less. And most, uh, it, it's not, we don't usually have a problem, so we can go with that. Thank you, Patricia. Okay. Um, Looks like we have th three people willing to, uh, interested in speaking. Uh, the first one I saw was uh, Stephanie Niketish. Did you, uh, uh, looks like, uh, yeah, you're authorized here. You just, you can uh, speak and lower your hand when you have a chance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Stephanie Niketich, 93 High Street. Uh, with this plan, the historic building will become disjointed and misshapen. It looks more like two buildings than one. The addition is too large. I don't think it is compatible in scale and proportion or materials. The materials are modern and mostly composite and plastic. The design and materials planned for the addition will set it apart from the historic structure, but not in harmony with the historic structure. As attorney Mead said, the historic building is prominent on Olive Street. The addition will be very visible from the Olive Streetscape and certainly be visible from the Russia Streetscape. I hope you will impose demolition delay and encourage plan improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nickish. And I should say two things. Uh, te technically, there is um, a demolition delay sort of gets imposed <clears throat> and is uh, we would need to approve the demo plan to um, lift it at this point. And I also meant to comment that um, if people have concerns about things like sight lines, uh, shade and sun and, and, and uh, you know, lot coverage or anything like that, uh, the appropriate board to bring those to is the ZBA. Um, <clears throat> so you can make a note of when this project will be before the ZBA. Uh, our purview here, the Histor Historical Commission is along things uh, as we just mentioned, um, how whether or not the proposed structure is in, in substantial compliance with the uh, Secretary of Interior standards for a fair addition to a historic structure and so on. Okay, having said that, uh, I see uh, Mr. Colter John, uh, would you like to make a comment? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. You. Tom Colter John, 64 Federal Street, co president of the Newburyport Preservation Trust. The trust opposes this project in its current form. It is obvious that the developer intends to, to create another attached building where only one exists now, and this will have a significant impact on this historic neighborhood. It is excessive. In subsequent hearings, there are many comments the trust would like to make and intends to make about the proper treatment of the main historic house. It is a wonderful house and should be properly preserved. There are many details that need to be clarified and spelled out in detail, no matter the decision tonight. For purposes of this hearing, I have only one suggestion, to give the NHC a full perspective 
of both the neighborhood and the actual property, my hope is that the NHC will have a full on-site visit prior to coming to a decision. In the applicant's presentation, it states that the rear addition was built in 1888 and rebuilt around 1900. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I believe it would be helpful for the NHC to see for themselves the historic value or lack thereof of these additions prior to a vote. In addition, I would like to point out the potential impact of the proposed rear addition roof on the historic structure. Once that new additional roof overlaps onto the main historic structure, it will change the character of this house. The roof line will have changed and lead to what, what certainly looks like another building, no matter what it is called by the applicant. The decision of the NHC has broad implications for this building. Should you impose the delay and keep the building intact for a time certain or release it and forever change the character of this building as you can see by these plans. Please do what you can to preserve this historic building. Please impose the delay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calder John. Uh, let's see, and, and your hand is still up. Uh, okay, um, you've put it down. I see uh, Michael Tucker, would you like to speak? Good evening, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I would echo the uh, the sentiments of Mr. Coulter, John, I think. Um, I, my name is Michael Tucker, and I represent Carol uh, Zimbrogna, who is the owner of the deeded half house that's immediately adjacent to the proposed project. Uh, our concerns are uh, similar to what has been raised, uh, but additionally, uh, the, it's the removal of a, a relatively modest one-story addition on the back of the house, uh, which I think may have historical significance of its own, and its replacement with a two-story breezeway and another single-family home attached to the back. Uh, we've had the opportunity to do a survey of some 27 properties in that neighborhood. Uh, the existing single-family home uh, at that location is already uh, the home that we found with the largest finished area of any of the properties that we looked at on Russia on Olive, on Congress. Uh, all of the houses there are uh, modest and historically significant. Uh, it's the character of the neighborhood uh, for the homes to be of that type, uh, by which I mean modest and historical. Uh, and my client, uh, if, if you use the, the Russia Street elevation that shows the two uh, homes with the conjoined breezeway, uh, you can imagine what my client's view will look like uh, from next door on Olive Street. Uh, I understand that the zoning board has uh, uh, has obligations to consider things like light and air and so forth, and we will raise those uh, when we have the opportunity to do that. Uh, I think the suggestion that the uh, that the uh, commission have an opportunity to go and look at the addition uh, that is being proposed to be uh, to be demoed is a good one. And uh, if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to uh, respond. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Um, let's see who else. Um, we've got uh, Amy Badger. Hi, I'm a 30 year resident of 21 Olive, which is uh, diagonally across from the property that we're talking about. And um, there, and, you know, I've, I agree with the three previous speakers. Um, it's just too big, it's incongruous with the neighborhood and it doesn't fit um, there. And, but, but as I understand this meeting to um, involve what this proposal does to our neighborhood and does it create a substantial detriment or impair the dignity integrity or character of the neighborhood. That's as I understand it. And um, as the previous speaker said, he has done a survey of all the houses in the immediate area. Um, and I'm sure mine included, and I, I don't bust 2000 square feet, I'm sure. But um, 
the house next door was built in the 1600s. Mine was built in the 1700s. The houses in this neighborhood are certainly historic and probably some of the earliest ones in town. That house is so magnificent in and of its own right to be compromising it in any way instead of just enlightening it and championing it, championing it is really just distressing. Um, I know I have two, I know two people personally that would have bid and um, paid well over what this developer paid for a chance to make it into a, a beautiful one family home and have a lovely yard. The people that will move into these houses will have no yard. They won't even have an opportunity to put in a shed. So to, to say that it's in scale with the neighborhood is just um, crazy. My son is not around, but he has a drone and I'd love to just do a aerial shot of the roof lines in this neighborhood and then superimpose what they're proposing here. Um, I agree the Historical Commission should really take an on-site look at this because the yard, I mean, I don't know what we're doing in Newburyport where we have to fill every bit of green space with building, but there are probably ways to um, enhance that house if, you know, it, as it is right now, I am told that it is a two family house. It has been one family, a multi-generational family for as long as I've lived here. And I know it was many, many years before that, probably 50 before that. But then that would suggest that my neighbors who had their grandson and son living with them have a, now a two family home. So, I'd like to know um, at some point when the history is done, how it qualifies for a two family home. But if in fact it is a two family home, the developer told me it was just too expensive to turn it back into a two family home. Um, and I'm sorry to be crashed, but I feel like that it just is really a function of the profit that he might make. If, it, if they've got it in two, they can, they can rearrange that house and make it a beautiful two family home if that's what they wanna do. But this idea of building an entirely new home in the backyard is kind of squeezing through the, the blades of grass, if you ask me. So um, I will uh, maintain that I will be opposing this project and I do, um, I think I and the citizens of Newburyport are counting on the historical commission and the zoning board to represent us to maintain the integrity of the historic town that we have and, um, and we enjoy. So I appreciate the time and uh, thank you for your efforts. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Badger. And you can uh, lower your hand uh, if you would. Okay, I see next to uh, Carol Zampronia. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and yes, as, as Attorney Tucker mentioned earlier, I'm the- Sorry, your name, name and address, please. I'm Carol Zamprona. I'm at 20 Olive Street. I'm the direct abutter to this property. There was a comment made during the presentation that views would not be impacted. And I can say wholeheartedly that that would not be my experience. Um, my experience is that my views will be very much impacted by this enormous uh, development next door of 2,000 square feet and two stories of housing. There was also a comment made that the streetscape was not going to be changed. And I, I would object to that point. If you stand anywhere but directly in front of the house, your view is going to be very different walking up or down Olive Street. While we have a number of uh, arguments and points we'll make in front of the ZBA, our, our understanding of the purpose of tonight's call is for your vote. And again, with the other citizens, I would very much request that you take the time to come and see the property investigate in person what it is that we're talking about versus rushing to get uh, something going quickly that only benefits the developer, not the, not the neighbors or the neighborhood. I also have a neighbor from a, a letter, my apologies, from the other half of my deeded to two family, uh, Mr. Hayward and he, uh, Hayward Adams. He is unfortunately unavailable to join us this evening, but he has written a letter to state his opposition as well. 
which I can read or I can hold for the meeting on Tuesday, but I do want you to be aware that the other abutting property is also opposed to this 2,000 square feet property. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is it, you, you, yeah, okay. Um, let's see next, Amy Badger. Uh, I just spoke. Oh, okay. I've already spoke. Okay, can so, you lower your hand then? Sorry, that, that's what made lower me. Lower your hand. Um, uh -oh. Uh, oh. Micah Donahue. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Make sure I get the double mute correct there, or unmute. Uh, Micah Donahue, I'm at 16 Olive Street and have been for 13 years. Um, I am uh, on the other side of Carol and Tom Adams' house um, uh, in a home that we did um, uh, actually um, add a small second story addition to over an existing small first story addition um, about two years ago. So I've been in front of the committee for the uh, purpose of trying to get those approved. and. Um, what I wanted to say from that perspective is, uh, in the end, I truly understand um, and appreciate and respect the purposes of the Historical Commission and of the Preservation Trust um, in maintaining the character of the neighborhood. Um, what we had proposed was extending our roof line very much in a similar way to this project, uh, nowhere near as large. Um, we we're adding a 14 by 20 you know, roof um, versus this entire other building. And um, I'm, I'm convinced and humbled by the fact that I know now that it, it would have been wrong to do that. Um, we ended up with a, um, a much smaller um, visual uh, footprint for our project. Um, and I know that it is in better keeping with the you know, history and the uh, style of the neighborhood um, that we're in. So the, um, we, we also oppose the project. Um, we'll be looking forward to the other comments um, on the uh, zoning issues, um, but the historical significance um, of that building as well as a lot of the homes in this area can't be overlooked. The, uh, the only question, um, uh, specific questions I have are, um, I don't believe that any of the plans posted so far have measurements on them other than elevation. Um, and we'd love to see that. Um, the plot plan only seems to list a couple of the buildings, um, not all of the ones that are being proposed as adding to the, uh, you know, as being taken away to um, cover the green space issues. Um, so I'm hoping those uh, ideas can be addressed or those questions can be addressed as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Donahue. And it looks like we have one more. That would be Liz Hallett. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. Go okay. ahead. My name is Elizabeth Hallett. I am at 23 Olive Street, uh, directly facing the east elevation of uh, what we fondly call the old lady's home in Newburyport. Um, and I am in agreement with the, uh, the previous speakers uh, from Stephanie and uh, Tom Coulterjohn, on to Amy Badger and Micah as well, and Carol. Um, I completely appreciate um, your uh, architects, uh, Ernie's um, uh, trying to keep, you know, the design um, appropriate and historically accurate. However, we do have many concerns about it, which again, uh, should be addressed, I believe, through the ZBA. But I will say that the size of this addition will definitely impact our neighborhood. Um, certainly the viewscape from Russia Street, but also from Olive Street. Um, we have been here 13 years. Um, and I believe and uh, that once the Historical Commission, um, if you were be in agreement with touring the property, and the house, the current house, um, you will see um, what we are all talking about. It's a very historic neighborhood. Um, we'd like to maintain um, what we have here. I think it's just too, too large in addition to be compatible with everything um, around and would certainly detract from the, 
the historicity of, of the building, the old lady's home. Thank hmm. you. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, and you can put uh, your hand down. I can see two more hands that went up. Um, Heather Shan, I believe, our counselor for this ward. Thank you, Sam Richards. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Heather. So I, I agree with the, the folks who have spoken. I mean, this is a very special part of town. Like, I mean, it's like the South End. I mean, this is historic Newburyport. I mean, you just walk down Russia or Olive Street, um, it's, it's special. And this building, this additional 2,000 square feet, it, it does seem excessive. And it, I agree, it just doesn't seem like it would be something that would really suit the neighborhood. So I look forward to hearing the discussion with the Historic Commission. Thank you for letting me speak. You're welcome. Um, by the way, I don't think you stated your address just for the formalities of it. I'm sorry, I'm at 43 Warren Street. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, and uh, there was a Francis Moore, but then the hand went down, I think. Ms. Moore, do you still want to speak? I didn't see the hand kind of coming. Yep, it's sort of coming and going. Miss um, Moore, if you want to speak, do raise your hand. We'll give uh, a couple of seconds to see what if that's going to settle down. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Is this Ms. Moore? Yep, this is Ms. Moore. I live at 19 Olive Street. I've been here since 1973. Moved in and brought my kids up here and everything else. I concur with everything that's been said by all the people who have spoken before me concerning this neighborhood. It just makes me incredibly sad to think that we have to have an infill behind that wonderful building. It just, just saddens me. And that's really all I need to say. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Uh, now you can put the hand down. <laughs> There's more. I'll give another just a couple seconds. If no other hands go up, we will close the public comment period. Yeah, it looks like there aren't. So we'll formally close that public comment period. Uh, just a couple quick comments before I turn over to members of, of my board to ask their questions or make comment. Uh, someone commented on the whole two-family business. Just a quick note on that. Uh, prop structures can, uh, that's called a use, I believe, and uh, they uh, people can't just change those willy-nilly. However, they can be changed. I forget if it's the planning board or the ZBA that does that, but but uh, there shouldn't be any uh, if our um, if in the um, if on the city records it's listed as two family. That is the use that it's legally listed as, and uh, I know I know that those are, are changed back and forth, uh, not infrequently. Okay, so let me turn to my fellow uh, board members here and uh, see if first if anyone has a question for the architect or butter or comment. I see Patricia, your hand went up. Uh, that's yeah. the vice chair, Patricia Pecknick. You want to go ahead? Yes, I. There's some information in the letter, some on the drawings, and some I found in, in the assessor's card that was filed in the ZBA application, but I cannot find the proposed ridge height or the dimensions of the proposed addition. What, so what is the, the existing ridge height, the proposed ridge height? And then I think the existing building is 41 by 38 and I'm wondering about the proposed building. Yeah, and this illustration I'm looking at now, uh, Caitlin or Andy, you'd have to kind of zoom in. There are some, it does give a ridge height there in the lower part of that, but it's too small to read what that is. Uh, but uh, I don't, on the addition, I'm just seeing an eave height, not a ridge height. I think, believe the architect commented that it's, uh, I forget, it was two or three feet lower. It's but Several feet and somewhat shorter. I would like the number. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's, and one of the uh, uh, members of the public commented on that as well, that some of these dimensions are the um, plans like on, on slide 25. Who's driving? Is it Caitlin or Andy that's sort of driving this? Uh, it's Caitlin. Uh, Okay, is there a plan view? Uh, these are elevations. Is there a plan view that would have some of those dimensions? So, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yep. yep. Um, so the city uses, as you know, uh, mean roof height. Um, yep. And so that's, of course, what we have on the plans. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think we'll, you know, we'll be um, back before the commission uh, is my guess. So um, I'm listening and taking a list of uh, the comments that I've heard and we'll be hearing from the uh, members. I don't know if Ernie can give you the dimensions, I suspect he can, of the addition footprint. I think that's what Ms. Pecknick wants. Um, so we can provide that and we'll provide the ridge height. He actually may have that um, off the top of his head, but we're certainly um, able mm -hmm. to add it to the plans. Okay, um, uh, I apologize for getting in and out of uh, Zoom is uh, I wanna make sure if I were to get out to be able to access drawings that I could get back in. But I will tell you that um, regardless of the number, the height of the ridge of the new addition is two feet lower than the existing ridge line. And the height of the um, connector roof is three foot six lower than the existing roof. Uh, what those actual numbers are, um, I, we would have to follow back with you. I would have to open uh, computer files to give you that actual information. The footprint of the new addition, uh, the main body of the addition is 33 foot eight inches by 26 foot six inches. Uh, the connector is 14 foot nine inches long on Russia Street and it's 12 foot zero on the side yard dimension. The building can't, so those facades are different lengths. Um, and that's what I have for uh, footprint dimension. Okay. And how does that compare to the footprint? Do you have the footprint dimensions of the uh, existing structure? The existing structure is um, 38 feet long on uh, Russia Street and 39 foot 11 along uh, Olive Street. Thank you. Uh, Patricia, did you have um, other comments or questions? I see you took your hand down, let's know. So I'll just go around really quickly. Um, Chris Fay, did you have any questions or comments? Um, I don't have any questions. I, I would echo what has been said in the public comment. This is a Russia Street in particular is a both streets are, but Russia Street is a very small, very narrow. It's almost a lane, it seems like to me, and it's a mm -hmm. beautiful street. And I think that this just overwhelms Russia th that that whole sort of vibe on Russia Street, as well as Olive Street. I think somebody said it, you know, the the idea that every small, because if you, if, as I was on Google Maps again, uh, there's a lot of sort of empty space on Russia Street. And the idea that we have to develop every square inch, and, I, and I'm gonna emphasize the word develop here, because um, I think we all know what we're looking at here. And uh, the idea that we need to develop everything and conduize everything, um, it just doesn't make sense. It's not, it just doesn't make sense to me. So that's that's all I have to say. All right, thanks. Um, Joe Morgan, any comments from you? <clears throat> yes. Um, I, um, I walked the neighborhood today uh, and uh, it is a really, um, it's a beautiful, I was, I was not really knowledgeable about Russia Street, and only recently was introduced to uh, Olive Street. Um, they are they're really quite clearly the uh, the historical fabric. I think, as uh, Heather Shan mentioned, and uh, others, um, <clears throat> they really represent the historical fabric of Newburyport. I think really great examples of of the of the old neighborhoods. But I was looking really more at, in addition to the character and the feel, I was looking at some of the densities and the sizes. And I just in, in terms of a pattern language, uh, and this is not any technical study, but just my impression, I don't see really anything incompatible with what's being proposed in terms of the size, the setback, or the scale of the of the addition. I, I, um, I, I think that it works. I mean, just looking at the Sanborns, looking at my, look at the Google Maps, you look at the density and the sizes of the properties, the narrowness, 
uh, you look at the property that's across the street on Olive Street, um, I think uh, it's 20, 25 or 27, 29, 31, 33, something like that. Those, that, that series, which is really a lovely building, the white clab or two-story building with three separate in entrances there. It's a long facade. So it's actually a, an anomaly in terms of the dimensional uh, the dimensional um, <clears throat> rhythms that you see on the street, but the, the, the lot sizes are very narrow facing Olive Street. Um, and since this would not really so much impact Olive, I mean, it, it's going to re respect the side lot setback facing Russia, but don't really see it having an enormous impact really on, uh, on the historical Olive Street elevation. And I don't really, I also don't think it should too adversely impact Russia. I mean, it is going with, especially with the tree there and the landscaping, which is fairly dense at the neighbor, neighboring property to the West, which is really a very low, a very low structure. My question would be in the future, would that adjacent neighbor want to build more densely or higher? I really don't see how they could because it's a very small property and it's a very, and it's, it's more than 50% lot coverage. So I don't really see that property behind really uh, being having much opportunity to uh, to grow, um, so my 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 analysis really isn't about uh, size and and uh, and density. It's really about architectural quality, and and I have a real problem with what's what's I, my eye just finds this kind of repugnant. I don't see any really creative op a creative effort to cr to do something that's respectful to the original property. Um, which is unique and, and quite lovely. Um, I, and yet I don't see it wanting to really try to pick up on the real and dimensional intents, the openings, the rhythms of the original property. It's, it's in another land somewhere in between. I don't know what to suggest in an affirmative to make it better. I, I just right now, I'm trying to figure out what the architect is trying to do there in terms of the trying to match compatibly the historical uh, original building, and uh, it, I, maybe I don't I don't know if the connecting to it is is uh, I'm having trouble with that. Maybe maybe I am. Maybe it's creating maybe the fact that it's trying to join the original building and really say I'm an addition to it. Maybe that's the issue. But when I look at the dimensions of the double windows, I, that seems to be completely out of character with any kind of, if, if the intent here is to somehow respond to, to the historical building, the window dimensions are totally incorrect. The variation in the window dimension on the main facade is completely incorrect. The blankness of the lower story, that's incorrect. Um, so I, I, I don't, I, I, would, I would want to understand the architect, what he's trying to do in terms of creating something that's compatible yet different. Um, mm. So I think that, I think that, I think that says it for me. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joe. Ms. Yeah. Um, Becknick, I see your hand is up. Do you want to go next? Yes. I'm looking at standard nine of the secretary's standards, which the applicant also quoted from in the presentation. Uh, standard nine says, of about new additions, the new work will be differentiated from the old and we will be compatible with the materials, features, size, scale, and proportions and massing to protect the integrity of the property and its environment. So it definitely satisfies the differentiation requirement, um, not in a way that I find pleasing, but it does. But it fails, uh, for me, it fails on materials, size, scale, and massing, both with regards to the property itself and the environment. I did a few site visits and I, you know, did some research on the um, deed history of some of the adjacent houses. So for me, the environment I'm looking at is also, you know, 1820 Olive that we heard from the, the residents there. The Form B says it's 1845, unusual Greek revival brick. The assessor's card says 1118. That has a subordinate and very materials compatible addition. 26 Olive, the 1796 William Pickett house. I think it's from in front of that house on Olive Street that the view uh, will of the house will be the, mo the most, one of the most tough uh, spots to see that, uh, that big addition. Uh, 21 Olive, the 1810 Federalist, we heard from 
the owner there. And I remember when that went through. And again, I think that's a very subordinate and materials compatible expansion. 23 all of across. The assessor's card says 1699. The whole, that whole Italian A, all the row houses at 29 to 35 olive. And the nice uh, federal at three to five Russia Street. When I look at the environment, I conclude that the addition will be intrusive on and not barely noticeable from Russia Street, especially. And then in regards to the impact on the house itself, in its size, scale, and massing, I have to agree with uh, people in public comment. It's not subordinate in height, especially the materials, you know, cementious siding and the vinyl or composite windows with simulated divided lights aren't compatible materials. The windows, I think Mr. Morgan mentioned that. The windows that are sh were shown in elevation six, the north elevation are, are just different sizes and mismatched. And it seems like there's an arbitrary number of windows on each elevation. And finally, um, well, not almost finally, I, I, I'm confused then because it seemed to me from the drawings that the chimneys proposed to be retained are not original but the chimneys that are original would not be retained. I might want clarity on that. At some point down the road, it's not, it's not a big point tonight because I think we'll be talking about this again. And another detail that we all want to talk about when we talk about this again is that on the original house, the note says restore existing wood door and side lights. So I would want, of course, a condition be imposed that the applicant would not be allowed to, you know, replace those features unless they return with substantial evidence that restoration was not possible. So those are my comments for tonight. Okay, thanks very much. Um, Malcolm, any, uh, would you like to make a comment or? Sure. Um, uh, this is, uh, this, uh, the original house here is kind of like, in my opinion, one of the finest, rarest pieces of historic American architecture in the country. I mean, the, the population of the United States when this was built was probably 5% of what it is today. And um, I think, um, uh, I just, I just think the uh, the addition just, uh, you know, if 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 something was smaller and was ancillary to the main building, if something could be done in such a way that it's not dis detracting, I think uh, this is an extremely uh, handsome uh, period building, and. Uh, my question is, is how do we make it better than it is? Or how do we do something to this building to uh, retain its uh, charm and character? You know, it's, um, it's difficult. And I think, I think the addition here is uh, just kind of, it's, in my opinion, it's, it's too large. It's, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, in my opinion, respect the the quality and the historic value of the original building, and I I I don't mean to be harsh or in any way. I just think uh, we I would like to see us all put our thinking caps on and kind of come up with something that maybe might enhance the original building. Now, when you're on Olive Street and you're standing six feet in front of the building, the building will look the same, but from every other angle and every other point of the compass, it's dramatically different, hugely mm -hmm. different. And I think it, it really detracts uh, from the neighborhood. And um, I, I would just like to see something different. You know, it's just, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a, a smaller gambrel uh, addition off the back that's perpendicular to the original building, per perfectly perpendicular. I mean, the people in the past have uh, added things to historic buildings and, and they look great. I don't, this just doesn't sit, work with me. Uh, that's, and that's just my opinion. And I'm also a neighbor. I live over on Strong Street and uh, there are a whole 
bunch of federals on Strong Street. Uh, Strong Street was the uh, the driveway for uh, the city's last plantation house, which is still intact and faces the river. Um, we, we're kind of uh, in a um, in a in a wonderful situation to live in a town that has some of the finest architecture in the country and it's uh, New England seaport wonderful and it res it uh, goes to the period when um, we built the finest ships a sail and sailed all around the world and they did it with just a tremendous uh, I have a lot of respect for those people and I I would just like to see something different here I think this detracts from the original building uh, I don't mean to be harsh, but I think, uh, I think there's a way that this man can do something to this building that adds value rather than, in my opinion, det detracts. That's mm -hmm. just my opinion. And I'm also, uh, uh, I live in the neighborhood, the, yep. the old uh, North End. Yep. So okay. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, I see Mark uh, want, wanted to hear from you anyway, and I see your hand went up. Did you have a statement, comment? Yes, thank you, Mark Sendron. Um, quite frankly, I find that project appalling. Um, it totally destroys the historical integrity of this uh, beautiful building. Um, I walked by this building several times. I'm always stunned by its elegance. Um, and I can't imagine how one could alter this beautiful building so thoroughly by putting this addition that is, to me, um, first of all, not symmetrical since that um, portion that joins the two buildings is at an angle. And the addition itself doesn't even respect the architectural uh, elements of the original house. So uh, in my opinion, uh, just leaving aside the size of the whole project, the whole concept to me is, is really uh, very awkward, not at all pleasing. And it sounds for me from listening to the uh, neighbors, this will have an impact. Uh, so I, I can't imagine how this uh, project uh, can even be looked upon with any uh, favor or, or respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Um, Peter, I haven't heard from you. Would you like to comment? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think it's fairly clear the direction this is going, so I'll try to be brief um, because most everything has been said. Um, I, I went past the building and took several circuits uh, early this morning. Um, and it's, it's such a wonderful building. Um, of all the comments that have been made, um, the last neighbor comment um, by Francis, and I apologize, and I can't read my own writing here, Francis Moore, um, was uh, the most eloquent where she said, it's just sad. You know, in my mind, this this addition is makes a makes a nod, a token nod toward the original structure, and that's where it stops. Um, uh, Joe Morgan's comments about the fenestration, I find, to use Mark Sendrin's comment, offensive. Um, you know, the 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 windows make no sense. Um, they the the rhythm is entirely off, um, and in my mind. There's really, you know, you, you could separate this from the original structure and put it down in any new development, you know, you choose, and it would just be another McMansion. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor. Okay, thank you, Peter. And I assume you meant uh, that Mr. Morgan's comments were not offensive, thought it was the fenestration that was offensive. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant. Okay. If I said something, I should. <laughs> no, you didn't. Uh, Joe, did your hand is up? Did you want to comment again? Yes, thank you, Chair. I, I did. I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, uh, why? 
I, and since we have not seen plans uh, and may never see them, uh, I wonder why is there a connector? Uh, why do we actually have to, could we do a lighter touch to the original building and still propose something for the remaining portion of, lot, of the lot? Not that I think that that would appease the abutters, but uh, I'm more concerned about somehow improving the relationship of what's proposed to the original structure since it seems that most of our commenters have made made mention uh, of how of that uh, uh, of that connector piece yeah. and how it impacts the roof and the scale and massing of the existing building. Yeah, all right, maybe we can get to that. I see Peter, your hand went back up. Did you want to respond or say something else? Uh, you're muted, Peter. No, I'll hold it for right now. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. I, I'm the only one I think that hasn't said anything. I think it's pretty much been said. Um, uh, I, I also, uh, your comments, uh, Joe, on the fenestration, I also, you know, I've been staring at this screen that's in front of us. And um, yeah, it, it, it's particularly the duplex or double windows, um, you know, kind of it, it's like there's there are nods to the historic um designs with, with the let's forget with like the lentils above the windows that little um uh, keystone shape effect there but in other in so many other respects it's they're just that just doesn't they're, they're like well, pretty much what you said, the rhythm, the feel, the, you know, the, the different sizes, like why is the middle window smaller? Uh, and, and the first floor, why is there no window there? There's a lot of uh, answered questions. And I did, I, I think a lot of people are concerned about what has been uh, referred to as the breezeway or the connector. You know, maybe, uh, I, well, I assume that um, it's... <clears throat> Well, I don't want to speak for the applicant, but my assumption would be that it's an addition rather than a separate house for zoning reasons and so on. But maybe that connector should only be one story. I don't know. We don't, you know, it's not our purview to to redesign the the addition for the, the applicant. But that's sort of my thoughts on it. Um, so there was a question. Uh, let me go back to the architect or attorney Mead um, on the connector. Um, Joe, what was your you you had a connection. Uh, you had a question on that. But I, I want don't don't want to misquote you on that. What I'm asking that? why is it necessary to have the two story connector and actually encroach upon, as Tom Coulter John pointed out, uh, uh, on, on that existing roof? Can we keep that connector down? Why does it need to be two stories? And more generally, why do we need it at all? If okay. it, if this is a two family arrangement, why is there a connector? Mm -hmm. Um, I can answer part of that question, Mr. Chair. Sure, go ahead. So, um, you know, I think there's a first of all, there's a lot of comments tonight. So I don't, I don't know that we're going to sit and redesign the the addition tonight on um, this meeting. Um, but I will tell you that there's it's a two story connector because the zoning requires it. Um, when you actually have a connector, that doesn't mean, of course, that you have to have a connector. Um, but if you are having a connection. Um, it needs to be two stories. In this instance, actually, this connection serves as living space in a different way for each of the units in different configurations. So, for example, um, a portion, and I'm going to get the exact unit wrong, but one of the units has a greater portion of that second floor, and the other unit has a greater portion of the first floor of that connection. So, um, where there is a connection, there is a requirement that um, it be of a certain height, um, a number of stories, depending on what you're connecting it to. That, of course, is not to say that there has to be a quote connection, right? So, um, but that's there is a, a zoning requirement um, related to that, um, just for the commission's information. Um, but I certainly hear the the comments of uh, Mr. Morgan. And, um, you know, we're, we will certainly be going back and um, taking a look at um, the comments received this evening. Okay. Um, all right. It's sounding to me like I think we all heard the, the drift or uh, of the, or the uh, mood, or for lack of a better term, of the commission. Uh, the, now, the appropriate motion would be uh, that the, this, the, the plans be uh, 
accept it as presented, which um, if you Chair, disagree Chair, with- yeah. Chair, if I could interrupt for just a second. Uh, yes, sir. Patricia Pecknick has uh, had her hand up for a while. Yep. Yep. Okay. I well, I wasn't going to move to that vote just yet. I was just kind no, of preambling. But go ahead, Patricia. Sure, sure. I was going to make a motion that, that that it is preferably preserved because we haven't had that vote yet. And then I was going to make a motion that we impose the demo delay, or that can be in, in a single motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> it chips us up every time. The. Um, invite the other yes to, you know. no you're right you're right um, now that i think about it all right so so the, yeah we would do the first vote on <clears throat> the 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 historical the existing structure historical structure is is preferably preserved uh is there such a motion yes i would like to make the motion that the structure is preferably preserved and that we impose the demo delay okay is there a second? I'll second that, Chris. Okay, so let me go around our role here. Uh, Malcolm? Yes, uh, I agree. Okay, Mark Syndrome? Yes. Thank you, Christopher Fay. Yes. Okay, thank you, Joe Morgan? Yes. Thank you, P Pat uh, Peter uh, McNamee? Yes. Thank you, Patricia Picknick? Yes. Okay, and the chair is uh, yes as well. So it is preferably preserved, which means that we need to approve, you know, um, a plan. And that, that's what I was starting to say, that it sounds from everything we've all been hearing that the, um, the commission is not uh, favorably disposed towards the plan as presented today. Uh, we, um, uh, Attorney Mead, would you like to, um, request a continuance to come back for a uh, review of a modified plan based on what you heard yes. tonight? Yes, Mr. Chair, we'd like, I'd like to make two requests. One, I'd like to continue to your second meeting in August. I'm not sure what date that is. I don't know if uh, perhaps Mr. Port or somebody can. I can probably that. tell you that would be the next one is at 12. That would be the 26th of August. Okay. Uh, 24th, right? Uh, it's a Thursday would be the 26th. Oh, sorry, 26th, yep, 26th. Yeah. Um, so first we'd like to have that uh, continue to the 26th. And then um, we'd like to know, you know, I, I heard a number of the commissioners who have actually um, been out to the site, but I was wondering if maybe later next week we could have a site visit and try to, um, uh, we might even have this staked out, I'm not sure, but um, if the commission is desirous of having a site visit, notwithstanding a number of individual visits to the site. Okay. Uh, I'm certainly not opposed to that. Let me just... Uh... Okay, so um, I don't think it really much matters which order we take those in. Um, so the applicant has requested a continuance uh, to the meeting of 826 so they can um, reconsider their plans. Is there a motion to uh, approve of that continuance? I'll make that motion. This is Peter. Okay, thank you, Peter. Is that seconded? Yes, this is Joe. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, so I'll do the, hang on, just give me a second here. So uh, going through the role, starting with uh, Malcolm Conwath. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mark Sandron? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Christopher Fay? Yes. Thank you. Joel Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Peter McKinney? Yes. Patricia Pecknick? Yes. And the chair is okay. Yes. So, um, so that we will continue th this without prejudice to the meeting of August 26th. Uh, now, for the site visit, um, the this is a slightly less formal arrangement. So you were, th let's see, we are, t uh, there is one more week in July. The week next week is, starts on the July 25th is the Sunday. Um, so typically in the past, what we've done is pick a date that uh, the applicants and, uh, you know, at least several, if not all of the members who are, at least those who are interested in doing a site visit can attend, uh, usually, um, you know, some of us still have 
job. So uh, is is uh, evening possible or, or weekends? Sometimes we do these on weekends as well. Um, the tw I don't know if the board is amenable, but uh, maybe at like 5.30 or 6 o'clock on the 29th. Okay, that's, uh, that's Thursday, next week Thursday, today. a week from today. Uh, um, what, uh, what do people think? Anyone on the board have a either an objection or? Um, I don't have an objection, but I'm not going to be available that day. Okay. Um, is that the only day that week, um, Attorney Mead, that uh, you guys can do? Uh, we could do Wednesday, same time. Okay, that's actually slightly better for me. Um, so for, can can you guys give, give me some indication, either by show of hands or just speaking up, like how many people would like to uh, attend this site visit? And uh, if you can make it on either Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, Peter, I see your, your hand go up. And and um, Joe, okay, um, yeah, and I'd be interested as well. Can 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 you two at least uh, and Christopher, I uh, see Patricia's. Can you folks? How's Wednesday night for you all? I know it's slightly better for me. Wednesday's fine for me. Okay, Joe. Okay, Peter, Mark. I mean, sorry, Mark. I guess assuming you're not going to be able to make that either, right, Mark? It's going to be difficult. I can try. Yeah. But it's going to be All right. Well, these are is it's not mandatory. And uh, um, let's see what's Chris, Christopher, and Patricia. Can you make make it on Wednesday? I, I teach all day, but go ahead. I've been over there a few times, and I I'm yeah. I don't want to obstruct the process of okay. using a site visit. But thank you. Okay. Yeah, I should be I should be able to go. Okay. So why don't we say Wednesday the twenty. The eighth, right? Yes. Of July. And what time did you say, Attorney Mead? I said five thirty, six o'clock. So whatever works for. Okay. Um, six o'clock would be better for me, but uh, if I, I can make five thirty work. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think would that be would six be better for you as well, Chris? Yeah, I can do six. All right. Why don't we why don't we uh, say six then on the twenty eighth, uh, Attorney Mead? That's great. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Well, thank thank you, and uh, we'll meet up with you uh, on uh, on next Wednesday. Great. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Okay. Um, moving on to other business um, uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, let me look here. The, the MHC survey and planning grant. Um, Caitlin and Andy, did you want to give us an update on that? I know there's been some emails floating around and so on. Was there an update on that? Uh, Caitlin, do you have a preference? I don't care either way, whether you do it or I do. <laughs> um, go ahead if you'd like to. Go okay, ahead. so um, uh, Caitlin's been working on information with Diane, with Jennifer, um, looking at our, our records here. Uh, I know that uh, Patricia has been spending a good amount of time on this. Uh, we've reached out to the Preservation Trust, and we, we'd like to basically um, confirm the list of the top 100 to 130 Form Bs that we should be looking at. Um, uh, I presume from prior discussions on this and looking at the city's ordinances that the real benefit comes from having uh, structures that are not currently listed as contributing but could be. Um, uh, and potentially those are accessory structures based on the existing uh, listing that we have um, in the National Register Historic District. It, adding those uh, may have additional benefit because they, if they're listed uh, as contributing structures, uh, they could therefore be um, incorporated into the ordinance for greater protection than they are currently. So that may be additional uh, benefit. So we've been looking at that, I think, in part. Um, the uh, we're putting together the draft RFP for the consultants. Um, we're going to be running that by MHC uh, at their request, uh, as is you know typical for this process. Um, they want to make sure they understand how communities are you know following through in the typical format. Um, we're soliciting proposals from consultants, uh, both by the typical advertisement process um, that's required uh, for this sort of thing, but also reaching out to specific firms uh, to make sure that anybody who is we know might be very qualified for this that they do get a copy of it uh, and can respond back in the time frame. Um, you know, for, for responses being uh, due. So um, with that, I guess we were just well, wanted input from the Historic Commission uh, and, and, you know, to the extent the 
Preservation Trust wants to weigh in um, on where the priority should be for those form Bs. I think that's largely what it comes down to. The rest of it is is uh, is more or less the mechanics of the request for proposals uh, that we are just uh, combining together. Okay. Uh, Caitlin, did I miss anything, or do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, that's it. I mean, I think, you know, our office has done a little bit of research and um, we see that, you know, most of the primary structures in that district are, you know, listed as either, you know, contributing, um, minor contributing or intrusions. And so um, I think we would like to, um, number one, identify and inventory important accessory structures, um, review the list that we sent of minor contributing and um, intrusions, make sure that we're all on the same page, that those are properly designated, um, and then create the form Bs for the important historic structures that do not already have one in place. And Patricia has um, really helped us out and put together you know, a draft, um, a list of some of the ones she's been thinking of, um, at least at this, at this time. Mm -hmm. And did I just, Caitlin, did I understand correctly that um, uh, it was determined that almost all the um, historic properties or potentially qualifying properties within the, uh, like the DCOT area or historic district area are already uh, listed. So that's why the focus is more on the uh, accessory buildings. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now I had one question uh, looking, and this is in part in the DCOT ordinance, it talks about um, what is a historic building and so on. And, and the list, you know, listed as contributory. And it just says, um, uh, that this, uh, in consultation with the Historic Commission, the Office of Planning Development shall compile and maintain a list of all historic buildings or structures subject to this section, a copy of which shall be kept also by the city clerk and post on the city's website. It doesn't, my question is, it doesn't specifically say there has to be a form B to be on this list. So uh, do we, but I've heard that. So is that necessarily a fact or? Um, this is yeah. Andy, if I could speak yeah. to that. Please. I, I guess, and uh, you know, others may want to speak to this point, but I think that in order to um, ensure, ensure that the property is eligible for listing as contributing, we have to have a form B to document you know, the relevant history and the uh, significance of the architecture. So I think that that's really where the the need for the form B comes from here, um, as we talk with MHC and um, you know about uh, their whether or not a structure qualifies or should qualify. Um, for as a contributing status and therefore for additional protection, really. Um, it seems to be that, that you need to sort of document that a bit and that's what the form B comes in, but others may have uh, input on that point as well. I see. Okay, so it's not so much that uh, a technical issue of requiring the form B just to be on the list, but it's more like to get on this list, it, you're saying that it's historic for some reason and the form B is, is basically providing that evidence and documentation for that. Yeah, and you're correct, Chair, though, the ordinance does not say, you know, if there's a Form B, right? right. So, for instance, if, as you pointed out, if there's a structure that's listed as contributing, uh, even absent a Form B, it's still protected in that sense. Okay. Okay. Any, anyone have a question or anything on that? I appreciate that update. I'm very happy that that's, that's progressing. Um, I'm not seeing any. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andy and Caitlin, and uh, thanks for the work you're doing on that, much appreciated. Uh, the only update from the chair is that I will be away in two weeks uh, for that meeting on the 12th of August. Uh, Patricia has gracefully uh, agreed to, to run that meeting in my absence. So there's that. Uh, that's, I think, the only update I have. Um, <clears throat> we also have to approve the minutes from July 8th. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to review those. Um, that was a relatively short meeting, but or one item meeting, but maybe it wasn't so short. So is there a motion to approve the minutes from uh, the draft minutes of July 8th? I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, is that seconded? I'll second, I'll second that, Chris. Okay, uh, thanks, Chris. I think I heard Mark in there as well. Um, Okay, going around the board, uh, Malcolm, your, uh, approval of the minutes? Approve. Okay, uh, Mark, I bu okay, no, yeah, you were here. Mark? Yes. Central. Okay, Christopher Fay? Yes. Okay, uh, Joe, you were absent, Correct. so we'll, uh, oh, Mark, you as an abstention on that. Uh, Peter McNamee? Yes. Okay, Patricia Pecknick? Yes. 
and the chair says uh, it's yes as well. So that's it. Uh, the chair is will would welcome uh, and accept a promotion. Uh, 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 a not promotion, a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting, unless someone has anything else they need to submit. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fay. Uh, is that seconded? Second. Okay, thank you, Malcolm. Okay, again, uh, Malcolm, your vote on that? Uh, to adjourn, yes. <laughs> yes, to adjourn. Mark Syndrome? Yes. Okay, Christopher Fay? Yes. Okay, Joe Morgan? Yes. Thank you. Patricia, excuse me, Peter McNamee? Yes. Okay, now Patricia Picnic? Yes. Okay, and the chair is also affirmative. Thank you very much for your attention and attendance and contributions. <laughs> Thank you for waving, Mark. And good night, everybody, and have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Chair. Good night. Good night. You're very welcome. <laughs>